Hello friends, welcome back to our channel UiPath by Sujita. In this video, I am going to show you a real-time example for dynamic selectors using variables. So far, we have covered many videos on variables in dynamic selectors, introduction to selectors, how to edit selectors, how to fine-tune the selectors, right? If you have not yet gone through those videos, please, please watch the playlist selectors in our channel. Also, it is advisable to practice each and every practice session, whatever we are discussing through these videos. Okay, fine. Now, quickly recap what are these selectors. Selectors are nothing but the XML fragments, which contains the path to identify a specific UI element in any application, whether it is a web application or it is a desktop application. So it contains attributes, nodes and all in the path XML fragment. Okay. So when there is a situation where the selectors may not work, why? Because of the change of the elements, UI elements in the application due to various reasons, whether it is because of a new element being added to the application or because of the version upgrade of the um, application or because of the specific path which is containing some specific values of the attributes. Okay, to avoid the situations, in order to make sure that your selector is working in all the cases, we are supposed to fine tune our selectors using different approaches. So we have wildcard approach, variable approach or index approaches so we have covered many videos on these approaches so this is going to be one among them that is making selectors dynamic using variables so quickly show you what i am going to do through this video so it is going to open a browser and it is selecting a currency value, reading this data into an Excel. Again, it is going to select one more currency, reading this data into an Excel. Similarly, it is adding, uh, finding some other currency details and reading all those values into a Excel file. So if you could see in this Excel file, there are three sheets, right? So each and every currency data been shared into been saved into each sheet, right? So now let us see how this is going to be work. This is completely based on dynamic variables, dynamic selectors, variables in selectors, which became dynamic selectors, right? So quickly just delete everything. So I'm going to show this from the beginning. Okay, so uh, what we can do is let us delete these sheets as well. So it is always advisable to please practice this along with me so that it will help you to understand the concept very well. So I have a website to read the currency today's currency rates okay let me let me remove this first and then okay save it and then close it done so i have created a uh, sequence now quickly rename this sequence let me remove all these things okay it has everything let me delete this as well let me delete this okay clear now let us have an open browser because i am going to open a browser now first right so open browser
So give the URL. Make sure it is of type. Uh, maybe for now I I can give it as Chrome. Fine. So now after opening this browser, I am going to click on the currency drop down. So use click activity. then indicate this on screen before that let us open this so I'm going to run this file so once you open the browser you are supposed to maximize right let us use maximize activity as well in the browser so it is opening now so let us use this maximize window button activity so let's go back and stop this. So use maximize. Okay. Now you are going to indicate the element here. That is this particular currency element. Okay. Now let us come back to this later. So after clicking on this, what you are supposed to do, you are supposed to select the currency right so for that indicate okay let me open this drop down so for example i'm going to click on this particular one fine now let us save it and let us see how it is going to work and before that okay first let us see how this is going to work okay so let me run this file for now let us see how it is working super now it is supposed to click on the currency and select eur now i'm going to pass uh yeah this one if you see this forget about this ignore all this if you see this array underscore currencies this is a string of array uh, array of string variables which has um, these values gbp currency cad and aud values in it so it i'm going to pass this particular value here now if you see here click activity go to target and selector if you see here a a name u or right so instead of this, I'm going to pass this particular as asterisk and then just click on validate. Okay. Now going to remove this control K will give you not this one. You are supposed to get the other one. Let us change the, uh, let me go back and see the scope of this so that I can get this okay since that it is an array it is not showing for that what we are supposed to do we are supposed to go for for each loop inside this let us have a sequence where I am going to drop this click activities I let you know why I am doing this because we have some two or three options currencies right so it is supposed to iterate through that array okay now this particular current item is nothing but the current currency let me change this name to current currency okay so now what we are doing here select currency okay so now let us go back to this particular target and selector if you see here it is your so instead of this i am passing some asterisk and instead of eur i am using the variable if you see here it is showing the uh, just wait yeah now you could uh, get the str option 
why is t or option let us see why it is giving us t or option it is supposed to have the current currency is this a string no let me change this to string yes now again let us go back to our selector and then asterisk control k confirm ok ok fine so I have created a str option which is nothing but r string and I am going to use this in an assign activity here where I am passing this str string as a current currency value into str string so that I can utilize this in our selector as a variable. So instead of current currency what I am going to do is I am going to pass str currency let me use control k and then str option okay fine the default value is gbp but anyways in for each loop it is traversing through the array right it will be using utilizing all the three options available now let us do just validate something went wrong because the current currency option is one right it is showing so always it will I'll, I'll show you the reference let me save this now the expectation is it is supposed to use gbp and then cad and aud right now let us see how it is working it will fail i'll let you know why okay it has opened a fresh page now eur okay fine again and again eur if you see three times it has iterated but it has not gone through the uh, variables uh, var values in this particular array why I let you know why if you see in the selector the parent ID it is always referring to one right so let us remove this part we can edit this and we can remove this it, this is not going to be used now I just omitted this one now just validate it and then let us let us remove this part okay now let us see how it is going to okay first let us indicate this let me select this part gbp for example and then okay instead of this gbp what i'm going to pass str option right after this we are going to use asterisk because that uh, hyphen is there right and also i'm not going to use parent id option right there are multiple things to learn through this uh, uh, use case so don't miss anything okay now if you could see it is containing the container uh, tag also node also see if you see here app and all so let us just leave this let us just leave this for now and then let us remove the yeah browsers let us run this now let's see how it behaves The expectation is it should run for the all three values in array. Right? Let me, let me just remove this W. This is happening because it is containing the parent uh, nodes also, browser uh, nodes if you see here, right? So let me remove this first, which is not required. 
also the historical title which is not required. Now we need only the AA name and the tag. Now let us just run this one and before that let me delete this one. Now let me run this file. Guys, maximized. Now it should click on currency. Okay, it is again and again refreshing the page. If you reason, reason behind that is this particular selector. Now let me go back to this open UI explorer and then watch carefully. Why I am showing all these failure scenarios is to make you confidence on editing part. It's not like a remembering, easy to remember and going and copy paste kind of work, right? We are supposed to uh, fix each and every issue in our every step. So this is how you are going to edit in real scenarios, okay? Now indicate the element on screen. Okay, let me open. Now this is the agenda. This is a bank website where we can find different currencies for the particular date currency rates. Okay, if I select for Australian dollar and click on confirm. <coughs> uh, yeah, let me click on this confirm and just if you see here. Yeah, Australian dollar currency rates for that particular date been displayed here. Now our agenda is, let us uh, use this currency drop down and select 3 to 4 different currencies. Click on confirm and copy this particular data into an excel file. Okay, so this is our agenda. Now how to do this and what kind of issues we may face in order to automate this web uh, application. So all this we are going to cover through this video. Okay, fine. Now let us quickly go back to our uh, studio. I just uh, created a sequence, a print sequence for this and renamed it as dynamic selectors because it is always advisable to rename each and every activity for more readability. Also I have created an annotation for our understanding. Okay, so it is a good uh, coding best practice to have annotations whenever it is needed. Now, let us uh, <coughs> open, use open browser. Since that is it is in classic experience, I am going to have open browser. Okay. Now, I am opening the website. So, I am replacing, renaming this particular activity. Bank website. So, let me give this URL here. So this is our URL and if you go to the properties of this particular activity, you could see browser type, select the browser Chrome. Fine. Now what we are going to do in this browser, <coughs> we are going to currency field, right? Now let us use click activity here. So just type click. Fine. Now, indicate the element in the website. So, I am going to edit this element. Fine. So, just go back to the properties here and go to target and check whether the selector is valid or not. Right. It is showing as valid. Now, simply close this and let us test until this part. Okay. For that, run the file and let us see whether it is indicating that particular currency field or not. Right. This has been uh, opened a new browser and then once after launching this, it is supposed to maximize, uh, right? We missed that. So let us use a maximize window activity. 
to maximize this particular website browser <clears throat> so let me go back to our code and just I think it's right. yeah so this is working fine now let us go back to our code and then use maximize window maximize window okay inside this open browser fine now what happens now after <coughs> here I'm supposed to click on this so I'm going to use one more click activity to select the currency so let us use one more click where I'm going to select say suppose GBP okay fine now let us quickly rename these activities fine now just save this now uh, let us rerun this again so whether it is um, uh, uh, getting the GBP value or not let us let us run this file again until this part I request you to please uh, do the same practice session along with the, with this video so that you will come to know you will come across with different kind of issues and you will be able to resolve all those kind of issues by the end of this video <coughs> Simply watching the video may not give you complete understanding. So it is always advisable to work along with me. So if you have seen this, it has uh, went to this particular browser and it has clicked the drop down and selected the GBP. Now, I just want one more. <coughs> uh, okay. After this, what we thought, we, we just thought like we could use some, uh, the, uh, what to say, this particular data. Yeah, we should copy this particular data into an Excel file, right? For that, we have already uh, had an Excel file in this uh, data. So now what we are going to do is we are going to use the data scraping method in order to collect the data and save it to Excel file. Now quickly go to go back to our, yeah, this one and just uh, select some Australian dollar and just give confirm. So it has given this data. Now use our data scraping technique here. Just click on next. If you are not sure about how to use this data scraping wizard, you just go through our video on data scraping, which gives you a clear understanding and with each and every step uh, with clear information. And that's in that video in our channel. Just go to our videos in our channel and type data. Uh, scraping you will get to know about this okay fine for now I am just selecting this particular uh, cell so it is asking whether to extract the complete data or not in the whole table so I said okay so I am just clicking on finish before that I am going to give this as zero because it, it is supposed to get all the results now click on finish since there is no navigation for this particular uh, data, I am clicking on no. Okay, fine. So it has got this particular data. Now, what I am going to do is, I don't need this attached browser window or I am no, I don't want to have one more sequence here. So what I am going to do is, I am just going back to this activity and copying it to our open browser. So I am deleting this part, which is of which which we which is a duplicate one. So now let us concentrate on this. If you could see here, it has created a data table, extract data table. I'm just renaming this according to our coding standards. Okay. DT extract data table. Okay, fine. And I'm checking for the scope. It is an outer container only. Fine. Now, what I'm going to do is, let me uh, rename this extract table data. 
I, I can say like currency data okay now what I'm going to do is I just want to save this to our excel file right for that what we are supposed to use is right range right range workbook okay so I'm going to use that outside of our open browser because it is something to do outside the website right so I'm going to select our file which is this data.xls and then I'm giving this as sheet 1 fine I'm clearing this cell so that it will be copying the entire data now fine let us just save this what it says value required data was not supplied okay fine we, we, we forgot to give our data table, right? So, fine. Okay. So, done. Now, let us rerun this and let's, sure, let's make sure it is working as expected. <clears throat> so, it's opening a browser and it is going to click on the currency field. It is selecting GBP British Pound. And then, yeah, now let us go back to our code, uh, our Excel file, just refresh it and let us see what is there inside the data.xls file. Superb, it has copied the data, right? Now, just close this part and let us do the same thing for different uh, different in the sense few more currencies okay fine so let me share you this part so since that it is uh, every time GBP is uh, been selected now I want few more currencies for that what I created is I have an array of string where I'm passing three different currency values okay so instead of selecting, instead of having three different click activities, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this particular click activity as dynamic enough in order to work for n number of currencies. And tomorrow I can add few more here, right? So that the same piece of code, so the same sequence is going to work for me now let us see how I am going to make this dynamic. Okay, fine. So quickly go to this currency. Click currency drop down activity and go to target. Here you could see selector. Just click on this. And yeah. Now if you could see here it is valid one. Okay. Now open this in UI Explorer. Let us fine tune the selector so that it will work for our dynamic uh, range of inputs now let us see how it is going to work so okay we are concentrating on another click let me cancel this yeah we, we are supposed to concentrate on this click right because this is where we are selecting particular currency so just go to this selector and then use open UI Explorer okay fine here if you could see if you if you could concentrate on this it contains an attribute named aa name where the value is gbp right so instead of gbp we are supposed to pass some other value let me cancel this so instead of this we are supposed to pass this particular value so how we can do this we can use a variable instead of this and we can pass the variable value using our array right now quickly do some changes here we don't know what will be there after gbp because if you go back to this code after gbp some hyphen british pound after cad some hyphen uh, canadian dollar so let us concentrate and take only this part aud gpy and inr right shortcuts so we can just use this abbreviation 
and let us use wildcard also here so instead of this what i am giving here is after gbp i am using just a yeah this one okay and then if you see here there is one more option that is parent id current option so is uh, this is always referring to the second uh, item in the drop down let me show you how this is going to work okay let me just uh, go back to our selector let me cancel this no and let me go back to the selector i'll make a small change here i'm just using a wild card because yeah it has to work for gpp whatever it is let me just click on this and let us run this how it is going to work so you'll come to know the difference excuse me you'll come to uh, know what i'm talking about so it is opening a fresh uh, browser and then it is clicking on the currency field yeah and gbp pound so it is always yeah even if i pass cad instead of gbp let me pass cad instead of gbp right so the expectation it is, is it is supposed to uh, select the cad value so just click on this and save it and rerun this file okay right if you see here it has thrown an in, uh, runtime execution error it says could not find the ui element corresponding to this selector why if you observe the selector perfectly a a name attribute we are asking for cad whereas the parent id it is showing as currency option 2 so it is uh, checking for the second option and it should be equals to cad let us quickly go back to our site here and if you see here the second one this is first one and this is second one this is not a cad one but it is checking for the second okay which is completely wrong right so this is what we need to adjust now let us just quickly go back to the yes just quickly go back to the selector where is the selector yes this one and we are supposed to adjust this what we are going to do is let us just remove this because anyways we are uh, selecting this particular one right so we are going to omit this and then let us run this using let me go back to ui explorer because it is not validated let us fine tune this particular element okay now let us use this ui explorer i am going for indicate element and say suppose cad1 okay let us see the selector here so what it has shown it has shown the cad so here the parent uh, the currency option is third one so it is at third option but we are not going with this because to make this dynamic we are not supposed to use this so i am just removing this part and what i am going to have is a a name and tag that's it okay fine so now let us just copy this or you can say save it so i am just going to copy this and then moving it to here because if you observe in ui uh, explorer we got a different url right the it, it is this is dynamic but whereas the earlier one it is giving some uh, values so let us just use this one let us just save this and let us run this again okay let's save this first and then let me run this file so let us see whether it is able to uh, select the cad or not dynamically so it is opening a fresh uh, new browser and it is clicking on the currency then selecting super perfect so now let us check whether it is working for other value or not say suppose let me give uh, aud instead of cad aud let me just save this and run the file 
why i'm showing this uh, in detail step to step step wise is to make sure to understand how to fine tune the selectors perfect it is working fine right so now according to our uh, requirement we are supposed to iterate through this set of uh, array variables right array values now what we are going to do is let us have a for each loop let me go to activities panel and for each loop what we are going to do we are going to keep this for each loop inside the browser because if we keep this complete uh, open bank website browser opening browser that many times a browser will be open right so let me have a sequence and then i'll be adding all these let me go to this part okay so we are going to drop down and then single yes this is also fine so this is going to be yes perfect now what we are going to use we are going to get the array currencies so each currency will be in this current currency so let me rename this current currency current currency okay fine so let me save this so what i'm going to do is instead of instead of aud i'm going to pass this current currency variable just delete this use control k and you will get this prompt select current currency option since because uh, it, because of the scope it is not showing let me save this and let me go back to the scope of this particular array currency let me change that first of all okay fine fine also if you go back to this for each uh, properties of the for each let us have this as string variable okay fine oh you got two huh? let me remove this and here are our control set control set okay yes quickly remove this to the fine i got all this uh, activities back now now what i'm going to do is let me just quickly use this array of currencies and then uh, what's happening dude let me control use so now what i did i just moved all our activities into 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 inside a for each loop where i'm traversing through the array of currencies and for each uh, currency rate i made this look this carefully i have passed that particular value here let me just remove this part so it will be easy for you to understand okay so what i did i just used control k then you just select the option currency current currency okay fine now let us just save this one and let us see how it works now so my expectation is it is supposed to so it is supposed to run for gbp cad and aud as well as it is supposed to extract the data and save it to our workbook excel file here we are supposed to make some change i let you know later for now let us concentrate on the working part of selector dynamic selector now let us run this file again so i hope you are doing this practice uh, session along with me okay it is showing some error let us see what it is variable already declared current currency okay where is this current currency let me delete this one delete okay let us use the same one current currency which is available in the for each one let me check whether it is the same or not here perfect very good let me save it and then let us give a try now it's compiling the activities so it is opening a new browser maximizing it and once after loading this browser 
it is supposed to click on the currency field drop down later first value is gbp right so it is supposed to very good next cad next and aud now let us see what happened to our so this particular selector became dynamic now right now let us see what happened to our excel file what kind of data it has been saved what it has been extracted and saved into this so let us quickly have a look on this okay fine now if you if you observe this we have declared only sheet 1 but we have verified for three currencies right so each and every time it is overriding on the same sheet so instead of that we are supposed to have three more right each sheet for that let us make this also as dynamic now what i am going to do is i am going to extract the data what it is extracting it is extracting from this particular part and then uh, let me open this part yes it is going to extract so let me use this right range where we are passing sheet 1 so instead of this it is supposed to add uh, rename this as sheet 2 sheet 3 like that right so for that what I am going to do is I have created a variable where it is taking the first value as 0 let me show you it here what I am going to do is sheet I am appending with int sheet name so that sheet 0 sheet 1 like that now how to in increment this we are supposed to increment this particular sheet name right sheet count so for that I am going to use assign variable activity where I am going to increment this sheet name to int sheet name plus 1 so for the first time what what is the value it it has 0 right 0 now second time what happens is 0 plus 1 for the first time 0 plus 1 that means it has 1 so sheet 1 next what it is giving it is showing us okay fine now let me use the sheet name here let's see whether it works or not based on that we can convert okay for uh, 0 plus 1 1 so sheet 1 next next time second gbp after that some cad for that it will be having 1 right 1 plus 1 2 so sheet 2 so this way it is going to add the sheets okay now let us run this again and let's see how it works So it has opened a fresh browser and after loading it is clicking on the currency it selected GBP then it is going to CAD and then it is going to AUD as expected. Now let us quickly go back to our data.xlx file and let us see how the data been stored. So the expectation is it is supposed to have three sheets. Perfect it has created three sheets right three different sheets with all the data perfect right so this way we can automate our web application so this way we can automate our application in order to make sure the selector is working for different options so we have edited this selector in such a way that it is it became dynamic enough in order to accommodate different options currency options fine so I hope you got a clear understanding with this practice session on web application using variables uh, in dynamic selectors, right? So if you like this video, please give a like and if you have any uh, comments or suggestions or feedback, please provide through the comments box here in the video. Also, please share this video with your friends and colleagues and do not forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you so much for the support so far. Meet you throughout next videos. Till then, 
happy learning and happy automating bye bye